Hello everybody and welcome to week five of our video series that accompanies Max Lucado's book, Life Lessons from Mark. This week we'll be covering lesson five entitled Step Out in Faith, which coincides with Mark chapter five. To start, I'll be summarizing two central themes from lesson five from the Gospel of Mark in the what's going on portion of the video. These two themes I will be discussing are one, mercy, and the second, power of testimony. And then after that, in the life lessons portion of the video, I will talk about stepping out in faith as it relates to the story of Jesus healing the bleeding woman and raising a woman from the dead for Mark 5, verses 21 through 43. All right, so let's get started with what's going on in Mark chapter 5. Much like chapter four, we find Jesus performing miracles. Again, I don't wanna downplay these miracles and there are a lot of themes we can dissect out of these. Mark chapter five verses one through 20 deals with a demon possessed man who Jesus saves by casting the demons into pigs. Now we can certainly discuss themes of miracles, Jesus's power, and even Christ's will. Now all of these are great topics and I want to urge you to explore them on your own. But as I was reading these verses and through the discernment of the Holy Spirit, two scriptures and two themes stood out to me. The first theme concerns Jesus's mercy and comes from Mark 5, verse 18 through 19, and it reads, As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him, but said, Go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. When we read the entire story of the demon-possessed man, it's easy to get caught up in the big aspects of it. Jesus exercising demons and casting them into 2,000 pigs, and then the demons killing themselves by running over the ridge and drowning themselves. But much like Mark chapter 2 and the story of the paralyzed man being let down through the roof, Jesus is more concerned with the spiritual side of the man than the physical side. In the story of the paralyzed man, Jesus tells him that his sins are forgiven. In this story, Jesus tells the demon-possessed man to go tell others what the Lord has done for you and how he showed you mercy. Now, mercy means a lot of things. It means compassion and kindness and even pity, but it's God's mercy, that particular quality or trait of Jesus Christ that encompasses so much of who he is. God shows us mercy every day when we wake up and get to live another day. He shows us mercy through providing for us with money so we can buy food, so we can pay a mortgage and we can put gas in our cars. He shows us mercy through hearing and answering our prayers. And of course, the big one, God showed us mercy by giving up his only son to be sacrificed on the cross for our sins. God's mercy of allowing that sacrifice to happen and Jesus showing mercy for going through with it are the two biggest acts of kindness that we will ever receive. Now the next theme that I want to talk about coincides with the demon-possessed man and follows directly after Jesus tells him to go tell people about the exorcism and his mercy. The next theme I want to discuss is the power of testimony. Mark 5 verse 20 reads, So the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And all the people were amazed. <laughs> Isn't that the understatement of the year? All the people were amazed. Now what's interesting about this short verse is that Jesus had another disciple ready and waiting in the wings. He had another believer ready to follow him. The demon-possessed man was going to follow Jesus. But instead, Jesus knew that the man could serve him in a much greater way. Instead of following Jesus on the boat and becoming a believer, Jesus asked the man to spread his testimony to the Decapolis. Now, as evidenced by the story, this man was a Gentile. There would have been no way that Jewish people would have had a herd of pigs. Like, you know, raising pigs and eating pork were strictly forbidden, and a pig's character was considered lustful and from the flesh. So Jesus saw a much greater opportunity and ministry for this man. 
This man was to use his testimony to spread the good name of Jesus Christ. Now, maybe the first Gentile to do so. Providing our testimony is a powerful tool in spreading the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus told this man to go and tell others of what I did in your life, meaning the exorcism, and of his mercy in how he showed compassion by doing so. Our testimony is powerful. Now, hopefully we are never demon possessed and in need of an exorcism, but we all go through hardships and we come out better for them. And we have God to thank for that. First Timothy uh, chapter two, verse eight reads, so do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me as his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. In this scripture, the Apostle Paul is commanding us to tell others about Jesus' suffering on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins and his personal story of imprisonment, beatings, and hardships. Another scripture about the power of testimony is in John chapter 15, verses 26 through 27. And Jesus says, when the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. Here Jesus is telling the disciples to give their testimony, to testify about everything they had seen Jesus say and do. Jesus and Paul knew the power of our testimony, telling others how Jesus works in our lives and how his mercy is new every day is powerful. I think people are far more open to hearing the gospel once they hear of all the positive ways that the gospel has impacted us. Our testimony is a foot in the door. It's a fine point on the pencil. And our testimonies are the stories and the truth of the acts of mercy from Jesus in our lives. So there you have it. Our two things for this week, God's mercy and the power of testimony. So next, let's talk about our life lesson this week from chapter five. This week's life lesson is stepping out in faith. In Mark chapter five, we see two people stepping out in faith. The first is Jairus, who was the synagogue leader, and he came to Jesus asking him to heal his dying daughter. Mark chapter five, verses 23 reads, he, Jairus, pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying, please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. Jairus was a Pharisee and a synagogue leader, and falling at Jesus' feet would have put him in a really difficult position. The Pharisees were busy silencing false prophets and false messiahs, and they certainly thought that Jesus was both. And they worshiped nobody but God alone. So for Jairus to fall at Jesus' feet was a huge act of stepping out in faith. Jairus' livelihood, his position, his reputation were all at stake. But like many of us, we are often most faithful when things are at their worst. And for Jairus, his daughter's condition wore heavy on his heart. And as a result, this hardship was bringing him closer to God. And in an act of faith, he prostrated himself before Jesus, asking for help. Now, that's the first act of someone stepping out in faith from Mark chapter 5. The second act of faith occurred with the bleeding woman. Now, as the story unfolds, a woman had menstrual bleeding for 12 years. Now, I think we can agree, by itself, this would have been a terrible condition. But what made it worse is that under Jewish tradition, menstruating women were considered unclean, and she could not have worshiped in the temple, she couldn't have been touched by her husband, or she probably couldn't have come into contact with any of her friends. In essence, she would have been secluded from everybody. But in a bold move, in a desperate act of stepping out in faith, she reaches out and touches Jesus' cloak. She understood that she had to be quiet about it. She couldn't publicly let it known she was there because she was unclean through Jewish law. And well, she couldn't ask Jesus to heal her because it was forbidden for him to touch her. 
So instead, she shows such great act of stepping out in faith by touching Jesus' cloak. She has such great faith that she knows she will be healed by just touching it. And of course she is. Now, Jesus feels his power leave him. He's like, whoa, what is that? But he realizes that something's not right. But instead of yelling or embarrassing the woman by calling her out, he encourages her by saying that her faith had saved her and to go in peace from her suffering. Now, these are two major examples of stepping out in faith. Now, we definitely won't be struggling with that level of hardship on an everyday basis. So we might wonder, what can we do on a daily basis to step out in faith? Now, that's what the author asks in our guidebook. How can we make it a habit to step out on our faith? Now, first, I think we need to understand that stepping out in faith is nothing more than putting our trust in God instead of putting our trust in ourselves. Stepping out in faith requires praying and asking God, what would you have me do today? Stepping out in faith then requires us to be obedient when he puts us into situations, now sometimes ones that we are uncomfortable with. Stepping out in faith is trusting in his promises. Now, maybe stepping out in faith means that the Holy Spirit will guide us to speak the gospel to another person. Maybe ask us to forgive somebody we don't want to. Stepping out in faith doesn't have to be some huge act. In fact, it normally isn't. Stepping out in faith is nothing more than living in the moment, being obedient to the Holy Spirit, and putting our faith into action. Well, that's it for Lesson 5 from Life Lessons of Mark. We covered a lot of ground. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you have taken the time to complete your guidebook and listen to the Sunday sermon so that the Gospel of Mark has opened up even more for you. And as always, I pray that your small group discussions are fruitful and spirit-led.